All right, you are referencing this video because you are having some trouble with the uh, quadratic formula homework. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and work through this example here. It's number seven. Uh, let me rewrite the problem so that we have it directly in front of our faces and it's obvious what's going on. Okay. Now for this one here, um, as stated in class, uh, the first thing you want to do in solving this equation is get one side, doesn't matter which one, oof, that's an S, equal to zero. Okay, the reason for this is um, when things equal zero, right, there's very specific uh, kind of behaviors that can take place in the equation, whereas if it equals some constant, well, there's not necessarily uh, anything that can conclusively happen. Um, case in point, if I have two numbers that multiply to be zero, well, then I know one of them has to be zero. There's no other number where anything like that has to necessarily happen. All right, so the quickest way I can think to do this, and uh, efficiency is really important. Um, a lot of folks seem to think that, you know, if it takes you hours and hours and hours to get the problem done, then that's more important than anything else, just the fact that you got it done. But, as you know, there are time limits on tests, so it's really important that you learn how to work efficiently. And even in real world land, um, it's not tremendously helpful if it takes you a year and a half to solve a problem when there's somebody else who can do it for, uh, who can solve that same problem in 10 minutes. All right, <clears throat> next thing we want to do is, um, in this case, since we're just going to be using the quadratic formula, we identify. A, B, and C, and set up formula. Set up the quadratic formula. All right. Now, before I get too far into this, what am I even talking about when I say quadratic formula? All right, well, Let's identify the A, B, and C first. A is 5. B is 9. It's the thing attached to K. And then C, do purple. It's going to end up being negative 38. There's a lot of kids that will forget that negative. All right, well, what am I even talking about with the quadratic formula? Let me show you. All right, so let ax squared, and obviously it doesn't necessarily have to be x. It could be n or p or whatever. Okay. So let this thing happen here. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Then x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All of that over 2a are the solutions. To the equation. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to end up kind of just taking this here with me. And I'm going to go back to this first part of the problem. Whoopsie. Eh? And I'm just going to set this here off to the side so that we know what we're doing. All right, and we're back. So now we have A, B, and C identified. All right, so now, go ahead and find out what exactly I'm doing next. Well, I should say how I'm going to start uh, simplifying this thing. So first, I'm just going to plug everything in, right? So I've got the negative 9. Negative, of course, uh, because that's the part of the formula, right? 
we have the negative B, right? And I've heard some folks say opposite of B. I don't hate that. I think that's fine. Opposite of 9 is negative 9. Um, as long as you know what we mean by opposite, then we're good. All right. 9 squared minus 4. And then A, I need to multiply this thing by the A. And this is, I'm going to use parentheses for this. Okay. And technically, I should put the 9 in parentheses, too. Because if B was negative, well, then that might create a problem. So pardon the ugliness for that. And my C value is negative 38. Okay. All over to A. And that's all we're doing. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and abandon all these colors here because it's just kind of getting obnoxious. But what I really like to do, I like to do this thing under the radical totally separately. Uh, so what I end up with is 9 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 38. Right? And what I end up with here is 81. These negatives turn into positives plus... 760, which is 841. Okay, now that's my discriminant. Since the discriminant is positive, I've got two real solutions. Okay, so there are two solutions to this. And what I end up with is x equals negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 841 all over 10. All right, that's all fine and good, but we're not exactly out of the woods yet. Hi there. Nope, not there. There we go. Whoa, where did it go? Whoa, whoa. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so now what we need to do. <clears throat> Last thing. I think this is step three. Simplify. Solutions. These are the solutions, okay? These, this thing here, right? This is actually a number, okay? These are actually two numbers, right? The two real solutions. Now all I have to do here is start simplifying it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this radical. All right. So I get the square root of 841. All right. Now this isn't necessarily obvious, but this comes out to be 29. Okay. So, now, I'm going to go ahead and put that right back in there. So, everywhere I see a square root of 841, I'm going to put 29 in this place. So, now I've got negative 9 plus or minus 29 <coughs> over 10. So, now I've got the two solutions. So, here's one of them. I've got negative 9, and we'll go ahead and do the plus first plus 29 over 10. Well, negative 9 and 29, that's going to combine to 20 over 10, which reduces to 2. So in my solution set, go ahead and put a 2 in there. Okay, I know I told you guys that it, you need to put them in the um, like biggest to smallest. Uh, we're not worried about that right now. That's just not a fish worth frying. Alright, so now over here I've got negative 9 minus 29 over 10. And that's going to end up being negative 38 over 10, which will reduce nicely to negative 19 over 5. So now, 
negative 19 over 5 is a solution. Okay? So this is how I use the... Oh, God. This is how I use the quadratic formula to find these solutions. Um, and just generally speaking, I mean, you don't have to do this every time, but the fourth thing I would do is check solutions. Always check your work, okay? You, it, it doesn't take any time to do. It's not terribly difficult, okay? Um, I'm not going to do that on the video necessarily because uh, I just I don't want to take up too much of your time while you're watching this. Um, but what I can do here is just plug 2 in everywhere I see a K and just see if that works out. See if uh, that'll end up being 38. Um, so that's how we would set out to do that. Okay, Checking your work, I'll let you do that on your own. Um, but you're just going to evaluate 5 times 2 squared um, plus, I forgot the equation already, holy crap, 9k. That actually works, so 2 is a solution, and 5 times negative 19 fifths squared plus 9 times negative 19 fifths, it does in fact equal 38, which is a little crazy, you wouldn't think, but it totally does. Okay, all right, um, if you have any more questions, please direct those to me in class. Uh, keep on practicing this. This isn't nearly as bad as, uh, as you would think. All right, take it easy.